with that, the pH products, can you just introduce the pH products? Cause now there's four of them and they're all out as far as I know. And they're like, all like you can actually play with them and use them and stuff like that. And then how that fits into yield arbitrage. I think that'd be yeah. an interesting way to go. Yeah, no problem. So uh, there are really three protocols uh, that the pH team uh, launched. The fourth one is like a, a wallet tracker slash like market watcher thing. So a fatty. So I won't talk about that one that much. Um, but three three protocols. So Fiat, Famous, and Fox. Uh, we'll start with Fiat. Fiat is an Aave fork. So it's a way to um, basically do peer-to-peer -peer loans. So you can put deposit collateral and then borrow other people's assets who also deposited those assets in the um, in the protocol. And uh, you pay an APY uh, to borrow the assets, and then you get paid an APY to deposit your assets for other people to lend them out. Pretty straightforward. Um, PHUX, Fox, that's a balancer of... Um, it's a, they say it's a balancer. It's a fork of balancer V2, which is a different type of decentralized exchange where you're able to put multiple assets in a single liquidity pool at different ratios rather than just 50 50. So if you go down, for example, the bridge stable coin, bridge stable pool, that's USDT, USDC, and DAI all in one. Um, the RH maxi pool, it's five, of, it's all five of RH assets uh, in there, and they all exist in those proportions that are laid out in the percentages next to the tickers. Um, and so this has some cool um, implications on like impermanent loss, order execution, the ability to bootstrap liquidity. It just offers more variability options and functionality uh, to building liquidity and for order execution that a typical V2 or V3 Uniswap DEX doesn't um doesn't uh, offer by just doing like a 50-50 pool. And then Famous is a uh, fork of GMX, which is on arbitrage, and that's a peer-to-peer -peer leverage trading platform. So the uh, instead of a centralized entity providing, uh, providing liquidity for people to use as leverage, uh, the community, oh, we're watching the movie? Nice. <laughs> is, oh, you're muted, bud. I was like, I think it's .io, but I'm not sure. So I'll just Google real quick. But yeah. yes, it hasn't been out long um, enough. But um, so famous GMX fork, uh, decentralized leverage trading. So instead of a centralized entity providing the coins uh, that you would use in your leverage trade, the community provides the coins in a liquidity pool called PHLP. And then those are the coins that are sourced to traders whenever they want to take out leverage. Uh, so those are the three protocols. And that's pretty much what they do. Balancer fork, um, Ave fork. GMX for so we have decentralized leverage trading, we have um, multi asset and multi weighted liquidity pools, and we have peer to peer collateralized loans um, through the PH ecosystem, which are three incredible products that individually could take a whole team to make. And now we have you know one one banner for all three of these protocols, which I think is pretty cool. And the fourth one to tie them all together, well, or, yep, or it not, is it's kind of unrelated, tagging. but also pretty cool. Yeah, this one's uh just like a, a, a useful website. So it tracks the market and then also it allows you to uh, track portfolios too. Um, so yeah, that's the whale watching tab where you can look at different wallets that are well known in the ecosystem. You can plug in any wallet and it'll get all the assets across multiple chains, put them in a nice little format for you. So it's easy to see where all their money is. Um, cool thing, you can put your, when you put the address in there, it also tells you if they have a famous position open. So if they're long or short, any specific assets, it'll tell you if they have any loans on fiat. Um, it's a great portfolio tracker. It's my, uh, preferred one right now. So I have all my wallets in the portfolio tab and it's a private one. So people can't see it. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what Faggy is. And it's also a place to go get all of the links that you want. It's uh, the official, uh, it has all the official links for all of their protocols. So if you just want like a homepage for all the pH stuff, Faggy would be your, your thing. What's up, SJ? It's Jason chat. Um, uh, she appears. She she appears she appears from time to time. I saw her on your show the other day. It was, uh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that, get, was a, that was a great one. I have to watch more about. It. I didn't have a chance to watch it all, but uh, yeah. So you guys sound like you met in uh, met at the Pulse Chain tour meetup and then did, did a stream together. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yep. Awesome. So with these products too, um, yield arbitrage. How how does that fit into this? Yeah. So um, big uh, zoomed out general view. Yield arbitrage is incredibly simple, right? You have an APY. Uh, for a loan that you've taken out, it's a certain percentage. Well, if you're able to get yield at a higher percentage, the difference between those two APYs are pure profit, 
right? So if you have, if you take out a loan, that's 5% APY, and you can take it over to a DEX and LP with those tokens and get 30% APY, well, that's a 20% APY difference that is pure profit. And, and that's really powerful because you're able to take your coins that say uh, you wouldn't have been using. Like say you have a pulse bag that's um, your hodl bag. You want to hold this long term. Uh, but the thing about that is you're not, it's not productive. It's just coins that are sitting in your wallet exposed to market volatility. Well, if you were to find an opportunity where you can get a low interest rate and then use the loan that you got to uh, get a higher yield, well, you've taken those non-productive assets and then you turn them into productive assets by unlocking liquidity through collateralized loans. Okay. It, and when I was watching your video too, I, was, I had it just thinking of questions too. It was like, okay, if it's such a no brainer, for example, like it's so simple and, and, you know, there's ways to profit and stuff. What, like what are the risks versus all the other options you have like staking or LP or, or otherwise? Well, first Max, before we go any further, I have to ask you, is this going to be like our LP video where I go on for like an hour and 15 minutes and you're like, yeah, that stuff isn't interesting to me. I'm just using him for content. Is, is that three months is later? Like? Three months later, it's going to be like, <laughs> three months later. Know? well, this LP stuff is actually kind of interesting. What's, so what's going can, on here? So can you come back on? I need to, I need to hear more about this. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> We never know. The answer is we never know. However, I am paying attention. I'll say that. Yeah, so uh, okay. maybe not an hour. Maybe maybe if you could just do this, do this for about twenty five minutes, a half minutes, that'd be that'd be good. Yeah. No, I'm just messing with you, buddy. I'm I'm not gonna let you live that one okay. down. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> That did happen. Yeah, I was like, yeah, LP sounds okay. And then uh, and then later I'm like, oh wait, hold on. Oh, I think I get it now. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, okay, let me go back and watch some of these streams. Yeah. <laughs> go watch my streams stream. i did with <laughs> slop and otherwise whole stream on uh, my own channel <laughs> oh my god i i like um, refined hayseed also i like sleeping on the lp i I, w- I was with you sir for a while i was one of those yes so your your question was risks right like oh this sounds amazing free money infinite money printer yada yada what are the risks right yes yeah yes so the most obvious one is you're you're using leverage right and so to uh take on leverage like you are inherently taking on the risk of liquidation so let's say let's say you take your stables and you borrow Pulse with it to go do some LP farm, and the price of Pulse goes down so far that you can't repay your loan. Well, you're, those those stable coins are going to get liquidated, so you're going to lose your money by trying to chase this yield. Um, and then when you're when you're trying to capitalize on the delta, which is just the difference between two between the interest rate and the APR that you're doing, well, like you also have the risk that that delta uh, that gap closes. So if you have a, a, a loan position or a leverage position, which is what it is, and you're earning APY and that APY goes down so much where you're no longer in profit, well, now you're losing money. So, so you have the risk of liquidation and then you have the risk of the chain risk of variability of APY. And so if any of, if you get liquidated, you lose your money. And if you, the APYs go down too far, you can start losing money as long as that position is open. So there is an element of attention that needs to, uh, that you need to have if you're going to use one of these strategies. Is there a like a, a, an ideal time uh, to deploy certain strategies when when prices are a certain way or you the market's going a certain way and and, a, and like a bad time to do it? Like, is there mm-hmm. favorable conditions? Yeah. So I mean that 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 all depends, right? So let me let me think of what what would be a good good example. So yeah, let's, let's take the example of longing and shorting, because in a lot of ways, a lot of these positions are like longs and shorts. Well, you want to long toward more towards the bottom of the market because the, the price is going to go up. Uh, the price is going up if it's the bottom. And so you have exposure to that upside volatility and that upside volatility isn't working against you in terms of, um, in terms of liquidation risk. So the prices is going up, you're long, so you're earning money, you're not getting liquidated. Um, and so you would want to take positions out in coins like PRC20s that have market volatility more towards the bottom because they'll appreciate in price. And then it'll make you make it easier for you to repay off that loan, especially if you're borrowing stables. Uh, but the opposite is true. If you're borrowing towards the top and your uh, position is inherently a long position, the price is going down, well, the probability of you getting liquidated uh, goes up as well. It would have been better to sell. And then the opposite of that is also true. We're towards the top of the market. It's better to take off short, uh, take out leverage that is inherently a short position because the price will go down, which makes it easier to pay off your loan. Uh, to put that in like more concrete terms, at the bottom of the market, you would want to say borrow stables and then like buy pulse or borrow pulse directly. Well, let me think. You want to borrow? No, you want to borrow in stables and then get pulse. 
And then at the top, you would want to borrow and pulse and then sell that for stables. And then you take what you sold into and you can use that for a yield opportunity. So like um, if you took mm -hmm. your if you took your pulse, collateralized it, got pulse X for it, and then you sold that pulse X and then the price of pulse X and pulse go down um, relative uh, into go down proportionally to each other. Um, you know, you have to pay off your loan in Pulse X, but because Pulse is also going down, your health factor is remaining about the same, but you now have stable. So you can buy up the coins that you need to repay off your loan at any point. And for a yield or arbitrage opportunity, that would actually go into like a stable coin yield pool where you can earn on your short position in the meantime while waiting to pay off the loan. That's kind of how that would work. 